Welcome to Mike Brown Barbecue. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do some crispy skin pulled pork. I'm gonna show you how to smoke it hot and fast on this 250 gallon offset smoker. It's gonna be good. Stay tuned. All right, folks, it's early in the morning. It's time to get this little pork picnic roast trimmed up. We'll take off all this, all this fat right here. I don't need all that. We'll trim that off. I'll expose some meat. I'll have to take all of it off, but I'll take most of it off. Get all the loose pieces off. Just like that. Then we'll check the shape. This is our side that we're gonna make the crispy skin out of. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that here in a little bit. See this flap hanging off right here? I'm just not gonna be able to do nothing with that. So we're gonna trim that off just like that. And anything that you've got left loose back here, shape it off. To a decent shape. Make sure there's nothing loose hanging off. like that. Now it's got a nice shape on it. Save these other little trimmings for a snack. We're not going to put no seasoning on this side. I'm going to uh, pack that with salt because at the end we're going to put it over by the firebox and we're going to crisp that up. All right what I like to do for my seasoning or pork butts pork shoulders, things like that, picnic pork roast, which is a front shoulder. I just like to go on with simple, super simple. Pepper. You can go on with a fairly heavy coat of pepper. I like to come back and hit it with some kosher salt. Don't forget the sides. A lot of people like to mix their salt, pepper, and garlic together. I don't like to do that. I like to put it on as I go. And I'm going to hit this with some garlic. And just like that, seasoned up pork picnic roast. Pretty simple. To me, this is the best way to do these flavors, uh, your pork roast, or any pork butt. This is the way I do all of them. It just soaks the smoke up, takes in all that flavor, and it's, it's delicious. So we're gonna go get a fire started. Stay tuned. All right, folks, what you see right here, the spent coal from my last cook. I sifted it out in the basket. And we're gonna do the same thing we always do, is put on our drier pieces of oak. This is actually red oak. Okay. I'm gonna put this stuff up in here. Just like that. Got this all spaced out real good. 
And we're gonna start it with a torch. Cause that's just too easy to do. And just like that, folks, we got us a coal bed burning. I'll bring y'all back when this coal bed's burnt down and we throw our meat on. Stay tuned. All right, folks. So it's time to put our pork picnic shoulder on. And as you can see, all the salt and peppers on there. We're going to put this right here. It's going to be skin side up. We'll wipe off all this pepper off the skin right here. And then what we're going to go on with next is some kosher salt. And what this kosher salt is going to do is dry out the skin. So we're going to put it on there real thick while we're smoking. And what this is also going to do, we move it over to the firebox side. This is also going to uh, help crisp that skin up. Kind of give it a little firm pat. Any little bald looking spots. Get those. And all right, folks, there you have it. We got our skin salted up. I'm not going to put my eyes on this for a while. I will check it per periodically to make sure that nothing's burning. Make sure I don't have to spritz. Keep an eye on it since I will be going hotter than normal. And we'll get this thing done. So we'll see y'all in a little bit. Stay tuned. All right, folks. As you see, our cold bed's burnt down. We're going to move this up a little bit. I like to move my cold bed up in the beginning of the cook. Smash these coals down real good. But don't stir them up too much or uh, you'll throw a bunch of ash in your... And uh, we're getting these all smashed down. We're going to clean the front of the coal bed out right there for airflow. We throw our logs on, kind of put them back there in the back off to the side, what I always do with them. So we got that managed. So now it's time to grab our green pieces of wood that we're going to go on for to get our smoke flavor put on this meat the way that we want it. And what we got today is some red oak, green red oak. As many of you know, stated in previous videos, I like to start out with green red oak dense logs. And we're gonna uh, set that straight down onto that screaming hot coal bed. That's our channel logs. And then, then put two thicker dense pieces up on top. Put that one back there. Put this one right here. And uh, as you can see, that's already starting to take off. Yeah. As long as you got a screaming hot coal bed, you throw them greener pieces of wood on, they will catch and they'll give you a more robust smoke flavor that you're looking for. And uh, after taking off, it's just the way we want it. All that smoke's going in there. So I'll close this firebox on down and let it do its thing. We'll look at the pork picnic roast here in about three to four hours, depending on how the cook's going. So we'll see y'all then. Stay tuned. All right, folks, a little temperature update. I've been running a pretty consistent fire 325, but I'm starting to drop. We got about an hour of burn time out of that setup. On bigger pieces of meat like this, you want to get uh, stay on top of that fire. You don't want to go drop too low and have to come back up. It'll take forever to finish your cook. You want to be really consistent. So let's go manage the fire. Right, let's see what we got on our fire. As you can see, our channel logs are about gone. Hell, even our top logs are about gone. Let's roll this one off. Let's smash these down to our new coal bed. We'll put this guy right there. Let him finish burning out. We'll put our new logs on. So there ain't nothing special about what I'm going on with next. It's just regular pieces of seasoned wood. I don't want to throw too much dirty smoke on a long cook like this. So. Just gonna put us some good seasoned pieces, red oak up on there. 
fairly good size so I can get me a little bit more burn time out of them. Just like that, our fire is managed. Again, we're about an hour into this cook. I got a feeling that we're gonna have to manage this fire every hour. You really got to keep an eye on things because you can go from 325 to 400 in a matter of minutes if you're not keeping an eye on this fire. All right, so she's taking off. I'm going to close my door down and leave it about, about an inch and a half, an inch cracked, and let her ride. I'll bring you guys back the next time we, uh, we do this fire. We're going to manage this fire about four or five more times before we uh, we open that lid and see what we got. Let it cook. That way we can finish this cook in about 10 to eight hours and not be out here till 10 or 11 at night. So stay tuned. All right, folks, this is what I was talking about, hot and fast. We just put our wood on less than 10 minutes ago and I'm already rising up to the 350 mark. So you gotta keep an eye on it because uh, that six inch stack up there, when it gets to drawing and the weather's good out here, it's nice and hot and there's no wind, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll drag the heat up through there. It draft real well. So we're gonna come around here and we're gonna close this fire box down. As you can see, my fire has gotten a little bit wild and it's drawing. I don't know if you can hear that on there. I'll try to put the microphone up there. But you can probably hear that, uh, that draft sucking the air through there so we're going to close this down to about a half an inch and let them temps calm down a little bit you can i'll bring you over here to the stack i don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera or not but uh it's nice clean smoke coming out of there it's coming out super fast if that super fast heat is trapping through the smoker too fast it'll crisp the edges of your meat up so we really got to keep an eye on that. I just wanted to bring you guys in and show you that, and I'll bring you back when we manage this fire. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so checking in up on my fire, we're roughly about two hours into this cook, and I'm dropping off my target temp of 325 right there. So it tells me it's time to manage this fire. So let's take a look at our fire, see what it looks like, and we still got a lot of life left in these logs. So this is really what this is telling me is I need to tighten my fire up. So we're gonna come right in here. Oh, that fell down. We're gonna scoot those logs in closer together. And we're gonna scoot our channel logs in closer together also. Scoot these back a little bit. We'll pick these up, let some coals fall underneath them. And what I did there is I took my channel logs and moved them in, and I took my logs on top and I tightened this fire up. So what that's gonna do is give me more heat for a longer smoke. Like I said, just the last time we managed a fire, it's about 50 minutes. Now we still got live in our channel logs and the logs up top. So I'm gonna tie, I'll tighten this fire up and that gives me more heat. So we ought to get about 30 more minutes of burn time out of this. I'll bring you guys back when we uh, put new logs on. Stay tuned. All right, since tightening up that fire like we just did, my temp rose up a little bit past my my target temp. I'm really sitting at about three 340. So ain't nothing wrong with that, jumping up a little bit higher. That's just a little fire management tip that I wanted to share with you guys. And needle's not moving, so we're holding steady. That's what you want on big pieces of meat. You want everything to be steady and be consistent so you can cook it faster.
Stay tuned, folks. All right, guys and girls, it's time to manage this fire. We got approximately 30 minutes burn time at that last setup. After we tighten the fire up, as you can see, everything is about gone. Still a little bit of that one left. These little burnt pieces. That still got a little bit left to them. We're just gonna bang them down in the coals. Keep a good coal bed, nice and hot. Just like that. I'll scoot the coal bed up just a little bit. Bury that down in there. Throw those up on the side. Keep the front cleaned out. Make your little smiley face in there. And now we're going to put some more wood on. I'm going to go with some thicker channel logs to get some more bird time out of this setup. And we're going to start out with our spacing a little far apart. And as temps start to start to drop, we'll tighten that spacing up. And just like that, our fire is managed. I anticipate on getting about an hour and a half of burn time out of this setup right here. We're at the three hour and 15 minute mark on this uh, this cook here. But the four hour mark, I'm gonna open it up, see what it looks like. Whatever comes first, whether it be managing this fire, or looking at that pork picnic roast. So stay tuned. All right, guys, the time has come to finally see what we got. We're really at the four and a half hour mark. Let's take a look at our pork picnic roast. Well, here you can see, that soft on top is curled up. We don't seem to have no edges burning on it. It's got some decent color. I'm not gonna peel that salt off till we get ready to crisp up the skin. I'm gonna leave it on there. But what we are gonna do is check an internal temp. So at the four hour mark, we are uh, looking at about a 150, a 150 internal temp. You can see that. So we're halfway there pretty much. And uh, we're fixing to be entering the stall, so we're fixing to have to manage this fire. Y'all stay tuned. All right, so it's time to manage our fire once more. As you can see, we still got some life left in the wood. So we're gonna roll these two chop logs down. Bury it down in there. Get a little bit more friction. Damn, Damn it. Let's get that one on there. We'll put us one more on there. Them logs were really big that I put on there a minute ago, so they carried us for a while. So we'll do it like that to maintain our temp. A lot of times when you get in the middle of these smokes right here and you've been running about four logs, your coal bed kind of starts to minimize a little bit, so then you'll have to add you a little bit more wood on there to maintain the temp, especially when you're going hot and fast. I still had a little bit left of them channel logs and the log that was on top. So I went ahead and rolled them up in the middle, put them tighter together, get the friction and get the heat and put one fresh log on there and let it start burning down. Just the way it goes sometimes in a perfect world, you just keep on managing it the same way you was managing it, but I wasn't getting my temp that I wanted. So 
had to improvise. But that initial setup, I got roughly an hour out of, so that's always good. And I'll probably get about 45 minutes out of this before I got to reconfigure everything. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to close this uh, firebox down about an inch open, and we'll let it ride. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, it's time to manage our fire. We're officially at the five hour mark. Yep, five hour mark. So it's time to see what we got here. That big thick log I originally put on there. I'm gonna roll it off. The rest of these are pretty well burned down. But now we're back to having a healthy coal bed. Mash everything down, flatten this coal bed out. This right here will become one of our new channel logs. We'll put him right there. We'll put this dude up on the side. We'll put them coals up on the side. It's time to add us some more logs. Like I said, I'm going to go with some dense logs to get longer burn time. As you can see, it's a pretty dense log. And there ain't nothing special about that wood. It's, it's good seasoned wood. It's going to give me some good burn time. And we'll throw these two dudes on there. Just like that. I'm going to take right off and... I look for that to give me another hour of burn time. We're at the five hour mark on this cook. Uh, when we hit the uh, seven hour mark, we'll check this meat again and see what the internal temp's looking like. Make sure nothing's burning. I'm not really worried about checking for nothing burning because I've ran a low and slow fire. Even though it's been hot, my flame has been low and slow. I'm gonna go ahead and close this down. See if it's taking off. My flame has been low and slow and it, nothing's, no flame shot into the exchange. It hasn't been an aggressive fire. It's been a low and slow fire. When you run a low and slow fire like that, you run less risk of burning the edges of your meats on long cooks and stuff like that. So I'm not worried about spritzing. I'm not worried about opening that lid up and looking at it because I know I've ran a fire that's been very low and slow and aggressive, but it's been hot. It's been 325, about 340 to, to, to 315 most of the time, 320. We'll check this out here in a little bit. Stay tuned. All right, folks, as you can see our last setup is about gone. It's time to go ahead and put some more logs on there. We are roughly in the six and a half hour mark. This little dude right here, I'm just gonna stick him right in the middle. Gosh, these unburnt logs down in there. Clean the front of your coal bed out. Dump them off on the side. I'm going to move this up just a little bit. Like that. There ain't much left of those logs there, so I'm going to be putting logs on top of them logs. One right there. One right there. And two thinner ones up top. Just like that. Here in 30 minutes, we'll take a look at that uh, picnic pork shoulder. Bone in. Stay tuned. All right, folks. So we are at the seven hour mark. It's time to check this thing out, see how far along we are. We got good bark built on the sides. It's not burnt. There you have it. There's a close up of that thing. We are sitting at 191. And it's time to get the salt off the top of this thing. The 
Let's let that skin take a little smoke in, get a little color. All right, as you can see, that's what it looks like now that we got all the salt removed off the top of the skin. Now we're gonna check it around some of these other parts. Internal temp. And we're probing like butter. We are about done, folks. I'm getting a 186 reading right there in the thickest part. So we're about 190 consistently. I'll give you a look at that before we just scrape that salt off. And that's what we're looking like, where the scalp came off. I'm going to let the skin take in a little bit of smoke. And then we're going to move it over to the other side. And we're going to sear it off. I'm going to let this skin smoke for a little bit. And then we're going to sear it off over there on the firebox side. Stay tuned. Right, folks. So we reached the internal temp of 200 degrees. So now it's time to crisp the skin up. You see that's what it's looking like. Got some bark build up on the bottom, on the sides, even the side that was seeing the uh, the heat over here. That isn't too bad off. But what we're gonna do next, let's put it down right there and let that skin crisp up. Move that back a little bit. Get that back off that heat just a little bit so I don't end up crisping the end of my pork picnic up and you can hear that sizzling that crackling's getting down that's going to be some good stuff and you can hear it crackling but you got to be careful not to let it go too long it'll burn it don't take very long to do the crackling process matter of fact we're fixing to check it out and see it go a little bit longer you can hear it sizzling it's getting there I'm highly satisfied with the bark that we got on this thing, other than the skin. This right here is a Texas-style crispy pork picnic roast. Salt, pepper, and garlic. I am going to rotate this to keep from crisping up any sides. Let that side catch some, some of that heat. Even with these cotton gloves on, folks, it's hot. And there you have it. Flame kissed, crackling on top of that pork picnic roast so all right folks what i'm going to do now is get this put in a, some tin foil and I'll let it rest up and i'll bring you guys back when we shred it up and make us some sandwiches stay tuned all right folks so we've cooled down quite a bit and as you can see we're pretty crispy there listen to it crisp on life so what we're going to do next is take our crispy skin off Nice and crispy. We're gonna set this down right here on the cutting board because we'll cut that up here in a little bit. All right, now we got all the skin off. And now the next thing we're gonna do, pull our bone out. Let's find it, there it is. There you have it, folks, clean bone. Came out clean. Now what we're gonna do next, and we got some really good bark on the outside of this. So what we're gonna do next is uh, get our hands up in there. Make sure you got all the bones out. Sometimes there's a little bit of bones in here. And we're gonna shred it apart, just like pulled pork. Nice and tender, dark meat, white meat, all kind of good stuff in there. There's another one of them bones right there I was talking about. Hiding off in there. I want to put that on your sandwich. I'm just shredding up. Folks, it's super tender. Like I said, we got very good bark on this. All right, so we got that shredded up. I'm going to move this off to the side and we're going to chop up our crispy pork skin. Just like that, as you can see, it came right apart. Mmm, man, that crispy pork skin is good. I'm gonna put all this over to the side over here. I'm gonna put us a little bit pulled pork down right here. A little bit of them good muscles. That muscle by the bone is my favorite muscle right here. Nice and juicy. 
we're going to chop some of that up too. Well, just like that. And we got that chopped up. Now, all that's left to do is to make us a sandwich. So we'll put our bun down right here. We'll put our pulled pork on there. Just like that. And then we'll add some of our crispy bits to it. A little bit more on there. I like it. We got our little crispy bits on there. And then next, I like to eat my pulled pork sandwiches with some slaw. Now this is not a homemade slaw. I didn't have time to do that today. This is store-bought slaw. Put some slaw down on there. Then I'm gonna go with barbecue sauce. Today I'm using Terry Black's spicy barbecue sauce because stuff I made here a few weeks ago wasn't no good and I didn't have time to make any. So we're gonna put our barbecue sauce on there. Put our bun down. You guys see that? Now we're gonna give it a try. Man, that's up there in like one of the top five pulled pork sandwiches I think I've ever ate in my life. That's good. All right, folks, well, there you have it. It's super easy. You got an offset like I did. You can make that crispy skin on the offset. You just gotta put it on there and stand it up with the flames coming under the bathroom and hit it. Our total cook time was uh, right at eight hours. It took to smoke this nine pound pork, bone in pork picnic roast. And I highly encourage y'all to do this at home. It's, it's very, very good. You get the smoke, like a taste of salt, pepper, and a hint of garlic. And then you don't really need to add no salt to your meat because your skin is salty. So when you put that on there, that balances out just perfect. Uh, you can put pickle and onion on it. I like to do that also, but I, I like the slaw the most. If you guys like this video, like and subscribe, and uh, let me know what y'all want me to cook next. Thanks for watching. See y'all later.